everybody. Uh, welcome back to another stream. Um, last Friday, or two days ago, Friday, uh, Haptic Studio is now on the App Store. And it's uh, happy to say it's number 76 in developer tools with a 5 out of rating. Thank you so much for all the support on the app. Um, now, we did get a little bit of feedback. Um, and I think we're going to try to do that uh, real quick today. And then tomorrow, of course, is WWDC. We're going to check out the keynote. So let's open up the screen that the play button would be on. And let's pull in the preview. Moment there to spin up. <clears throat> I think we need to put this side of a tab view. Uh, doesn't seem to be a redrawing. Maybe if I do this. Close paren. Let's give it a close paren. Use missing environment object. Oh, my God. Okay, well, let's not get caught up in that too much. Uh, let's just stick a button at the bottom. Let's just print play for now. Uh, and I think there's a system image version of this. Yes. <clears throat> See, is there a play dot fill? Dot fill. Cool. Now let's give this a button style. Prominent, maybe? We do want to take up the basically the whole width of the screen. If we can get a max width to do that. So the max width goes on the label. Okay. Oh, and then this does not have a reference to the trigger service. Um, actually, let's take this play button and move it to another file. That's quite a few lines, and I think it'd be nicer to just see a uh, play button.
And actually, I think this view is not used anymore. Yep. No usage of that. Delete this file. And let's bring in how we configure our play button. Cool. And then we can have our reference to our trigger service, which is in the environment right now. Then we'll want to get a reference to the current uh, haptic event. I think I'm done looking at the preview for now. Hide it. Haptic event is right there. Um, Oh, are we still using? I think we might be able to delete this. Yes, we can. Haptic result. But for now, I think we can pass this in as a binding. of call is unused. Um, interesting. Uh, how are we calling this on the root? Ah, I see. In a certain sense, we might want to. Hmm. Like the root view could have a trigger function that the tabs call. Um, because otherwise, how would the uh, banner state get updated? Because that's owned by the root tab. <clears throat> or perhaps the... Each tab should own its own alert. So it's less of a global, perhaps. But if we move the um, if we move the banner into each tab, then the uh, then the root view that's currently uh, has the state. Um, we need to pass things down into each tab. Um, And I'll 
little bit of spaghetti going on here. I wonder if we can pass in the banner state through the environment. Uh, this might cause more problems than it's worth. Um, VWW, hello. I'm currently trying to reason about my code because I painted myself in a little bit of a corner. The triggering of the haptic events um, happens in the root tab view, which I guess is a little weird, huh? This looks cool. What's it supposed to do? Um, it's uh, live on the App Store as of two days ago, version one. We're just incorporating some feedback from a few people that were kind enough to offer some friendly feedback. Um, so it's a, you can play around with the haptics on your iPhone, and then you can do it on Google Play or specifically for Apple. This is with SwiftUI. This is for, for iPhone only right now. Have you thought of porting? Um, I don't have an Android phone, so I'm not sure if I would be able to test it so well. <laughs> um, sorry about that. <laughs> you can use blue stacks. I'm not sure what that is. An Android emulator. Yeah, but I think for something as device specific as um, as haptic feedback, I'm not sure a I'm not sure an emulator can really capture um, physical feedback like that. I don't know because Apple is really a pain in the ass for Apple minus Android porting because there's not much of SwiftUI for Android that, yeah. I guess on the flip side, we could put the result on the trigger service. And then, uh, use published to try to um, update our state in our banner. But this does look really cool. Why, thank you.
Hmm. Too many options of which direction to go here. I'm not sure I like any of them right now. Would be like uh, on change of hmm. yeah, I really tied my UI to my um, model a little too tightly here. Um, <laughs> let's see all problems can be solved with more indirection let's add another level of indirection shall we Once had all my views in one file because I didn't think I needed too many. I was wrong. <laughs> yeah, let's call this root controller for now. And this will be an observable object. And uh, who's going to own this? I guess the app will own it. I guess the root controller um, will actually have uh, these other two things on it. Um, and I think these might need to be at a uh, state object. Right, yeah, we're going back to you. <laughs> so then in our initializer, uh, say the controller is a new controller and it will have um, references to the other to the um, adapters to the hardware uh, and it will have a reference to the state as well Well, let's not do uh, too many things at once. Let's do one thing at a time here. You know it's going to have references to these two things. So let's pull those in and let the code guide us a little bit. Multitasking pro. <laughs> Oh, these need to fit colons, not equals. And then it doesn't have initializer, that's correct. So let's add an initializer. 
copy paste modify because it's going to take the two as uh, initialization parameters and then let's assign them to our fields. I get so frustrated trying to do this. I don't know how you manage this. So many files. <laughs> and I suppose these could be um, promoted to fields as well. And then at the end, we'll assign it to our field. Uh, let's do the same thing for the custom trigger service. We can copy paste modify, paste it up here, and turn the equal to a colon to say we have a field of this type. What's your favorite language to work with? Uh, probably Swift, the language I'm working in right now. And then let's assign it to our field. Right, so this is going to be um, completely reworked. Uh, let's say when we click this button, let's just go back to a print for now while we refactor. How different is Swift to just plain JavaScript or TypeScript? Uh, it's pretty different. I mean, they're both uh, C style languages, but they're both uh, pretty separately evolved from, from C at this point. I guess the main difference is that Swift is compiled and JavaScript is interpreted. And Swift has a more rigid uh, type system. Now this root controller, this will have the, um, this will own the state of the banner view. Uh, it's not going to belong to the view anymore. It's going to belong to this root controller. Uh, so it's going to be published on here. Uh, no longer here. So let's let's copy this over. It's not going to be a state because we're an observable object. It's just going to be published. But our trigger uh, method's going to look pretty similar to this. Oh, and right away we need the in-memory state that I, I held off on pulling in. Let's go ahead and pull that one over. Maybe this one should be first. Custom trigger service. Um, 
explicit use of self. Oh, sure. No problem. No problem, Mr. Tyler. Uh, oh, and this is just have an ID. Let's spell it out. And these need self, I'm guessing. Yep. And yeah, let's just take the fix it. Oh, another one. Send this. Uh, let's type it in manually. A lot of roots. If I was blind, I think you're planting a tree. Well, I am. Method expression. Growing a garden of trees. Anti the digital tree. <laughs> That's funny. Now, instead of uh, providing all these, um, well, let's not do an instead yet. Let's build up both sides and then uh, delete the other half. So we're going to pass in the uh, the root controller as an environment object. And then our root tab view can get it out of the environment. What IDD? Ugh, what IDE is this? It's uh, Xcode. Copyright 1999 to 2022 by Apple Inc. All rights reserved. It's a free download. I think you just need an Apple ID. Um, uh, developer slash Xcode, I think it is. And there's a little download button in the top right. So deleting this banner state should give us some compiler errors. So this will be the one on the root controller. Oh, and uh, we need to update the banner state first when we do the trigger. Okay, so then here we can say uh, controller dot trigger and save the ID that was uh, ID of the tab that was triggered. It's a cool thing I used to use for mobile development. Have you heard of Smart Face? Uh, smart Face, no. I, I don't know what Smart Face is. Need it. Okay, so maybe we need to implement this now. Updating the banner states. Okay, so let's run it and see how much we do. We have our play button. Oh, <laughs> we didn't hook up the play button. Um, well, we can uh, check the other things. Let's see how we can up the intensity. Right, so that's coming through. The banner's coming through. Yes, the simulator does not support the haptic engine. Um, cool. So let's look up this play button.
Oh, cool. I already have the root tab ID on here. Perfect. So the play button should be able to get the current um, ID out of the environment. Tab ID, I think I called it. Tab ID, yeah, it's right there. Oh, I need the uh, backslash in the front. There we go. And we can grab a reference to the root controller. Then instead of just uh, let's leave the print in there for a moment. We can say root controller dot uh, trigger root tab current root tab. Cool. We can see that it's the message is going through to the service. It's coming back out uh, in our banner state. Uh, where's my test device? There it is. I want to run this on device to make sure it's still working because, yeah, the error banner is coming through and that's a really good sign. But let's, it's nice to test everything again. And then let me show it on stream. that came through. Have you thought of integrating a dark mode? Yeah, dark mode's already enabled. Lost connection to... Uh, okay, let's try again. Oh, right. I have it set to zero. Let's go to B. Cool. And you can see the success uh, banner came to the top. I love the purple. Yes, me too. It's one of my favorite colors. Looks like they need, the playbook needs a little bit of padding on the bottom. Padding on the bottom. Let's say four. Should add font changing as well so people could have purple with space um I'm not sure uh, I'm not sure about that it just gets really squished to the bottom when uh, the duration bar is showing let's do standard padding Yeah, do a lot of apps do that feature? I'm not sure I've seen an app that did that feature in a while. I guess the play button's just a little large with the uh, with the duration field there. And it's kind of pushing everything down, so we might need to make our sliders just a little bit smaller. Or, or not, maybe it's okay. I'll have to, I'll have to keep track of how we feel. May I suggest stretching the release time for more precision of touch? Well, then they can just, uh, they can just type it in with the keyboard.
yeah, these are all these are all custom controls that I developed for this app. Like, this isn't the standard keyboard view. Um, I want to have the description of the field that you're editing right there. Coolly. Well, I think that means you like it, and I'm I'm flattered. Thank you. Okay, let's come out what we have so far and then move on to the next thing. What do we do? We extracted a group controller to enable the play button. I suspect in the future we can do a little bit more with that root controller. We didn't quite need it until just now. I wonder what else we can move into there. Is this going to be open sourced? Um, I'm not sure about that. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could go back through the VODs and copy it all down by hand. Um, I don't know if I want to make the source uh, free, though. Um, Maybe like a convenience charge or something. I mean, that's a bit tedious. <laughs> I was thinking something like maybe like tier two or tier three subs get access to the code of the current project or something like that. I don't. I don't know. I haven't monetized anything yet. So if you have any suggestions. <laughs> um, let's see. So the other thing, now that we have an actual play button, uh, we can actually use different labels for the tab bar down there. Cheapskate esque. I'm not going to pay for it. I'm just going to copy it from the VOD. <laughs> Need to offshoot editing. I mean, the point is to try to show this in the open um, to share uh process yeah the vods are all on youtube um so i link to it from my website there's the link to the app uh youtube channel maybe i should link directly to the playlist because i have one for uh for this oh, i need to edit it this is missing day 11. Uh, I guess I'll do that later. What about a queue system where you can have a back-to-back -back things that play after or another with another feedback? Um, yeah, that's I have that uh, on a branch that I haven't um, Yeah, doing a whole timeline. That's something that uh, Apple's haptic engine the iphone's haptic engine does support and that is something that i do want to add to this app i just wanted to get something out to the app store first what we had and then we can always add more features later so here the system image is always play um, I would like to have a, I think we can use, uh, let's open up SF fonts. Sorry, SF symbols. And I think there's a section for indexes, indices. Yeah, so we can have an, we can have A, we can have A, B, and C. Um, See, so let's go to the ID. Let's add a new computed variable. Uh, it's called system image, which is a string. And then what was it called? It was called 
Uh, circle. So is it going to be circle or circle fill? I guess we can be square. Square fill. Well, we can we can try them all out. Square dot fill. E dot square. E dot a circle, and then for built-ins. Maybe like a lightning bolt or something. Uh, that's kind of that's kind of close. But I'm sure it really means built-ins. Let's let's start with this and see what it looks like. It's not exactly radio waves. Oh, I'm not <laughs> I'm not uh calling my new method uh the tab item view. So instead of it always being play, we'll ask the ID which system image it should be. Built in. I guess it's really what built in is. For right now, we had a. Do we go back to the. Search for bolt, I guess. If there's no bolt square. Oh, there's a bolt square. Okay. Switch to light mode. I guess square could work. Yeah, the play button being so far down doesn't really bother me. It jumps down just a little bit, but that's oh, yeah, like the whole the whole screen kind of pops up a little bit. I guess one thing I noticed is that the play um, on the button is white, but in our little uh, drop down thing in our banner, it's black. I wonder if we should um, do something about that. See, let's go back to dark mode. Interesting. But stay is white. What's your main focus for this session? Uh, just going through the feedback, um, which was mostly about adding the play button and all of the Everything was a play button on the bottom. I mean, this was this was the main stuff I wanted to get done. Uh, 
like reviews feedback or general feedback? Uh, just talking to some people that were using the app. So you can still, we still have the play functionality when you tap the tab. Uh, let's see, I can show my queue. Uh, hide that, yeah. So that's, that's what I, that was my focus for um, the session so far. I want to I want to edit the text in the uh, in the banner. Uh, let me show the phone again. Uh, let's see, what did I just say? Oh yeah, the text of the banner. Oh, screenshots, that's another thing I wanted to do. Um, delete the screenshots. So this should be, I guess this is, looks like it's always uh, white, whether it's dark mode or um, dark mode or what's the one, what's the one called? Regular mode. Uh, the, but, the play buttons always has white text. So I want to match that. Oh, I guess the whole thing should be, now the, um, Now the image isn't white. I should change that. I think if I move the view modifier to the HDAC instead of just to the text, it'll be both. Nice. And then in dark mode. Oh, that looks nice. Let's see what we do. Uh, we will call her for banner. And then we also um, individual labels on the tabs. Or I guess I could say unique. That's sort of an individualized uh, unique images for that bar. Uh, this I can convert to a checklist. Oops. This I can convert to a checklist. Check off those two. Let's see, uh, let's update the screenshots on the App Store since they're a little old now. Um, did I push? Okay. Let's run our screenshot script.
and it's going to take uh here's of the smaller iphone the iphone 8. Uh, but i guess while it's doing that we can take a look at the screenshot set it has, uh, taken so far open up our text editor Oh, that's weird. So I guess it's like a picture in the middle of an animation. Um, that's not so good. Uh, we should probably either wait till the animation is done or just like turn off all animations while we're doing screenshots. Um, let's see, I guess we can make like a subtask here. Turn off animations during the screenshot script. See, so currently we have um, this is how we know if we're in a screenshot or not, and we uh, Uh, we don't have this um probably save this to a variable or something um, something like uh environment or something We can have a static computed var for the current environment. We can say if we're not in the screenshots, then so we could say uh, we could say equals equals instead of not equals. That's it's easier to. Um, Think about if there's fewer knots. Um, see, so screenshots is not empty, then we're in regular. Otherwise, we're in screenshot. Well, I guess we kind of, I guess we kind of, I do want it that way. As we can say, screenshots is yes, which is what we happen to be passing in. Otherwise, we're regular. And we only want to uh, compile this if we're in a debug mode. If we're going to the App Store, we don't want any of this nonsense. Then going back to the app, uh, we can say if um, current equals screenshots and we'll disable uh, showtime um, and then so when do we do these animations I guess in the keyboard view do we do any animations in here no do we or do we tell the uh, keyboard controller this have animations? Really? Let's see, there was a helpful um, blog post I was using the other day, and I just thanked the guy. Uh, how do I get back to the blog post? Um, I think I mentioned it in a commit message. I think they said something about um, how to disable animations. Oh, here it is. Oh, 
Oh, you can just turn off all animations. Okay. Alt tab menu for our MacBooks looks so cool. What the hell? This thing? That looks so good. <laughs> um, let's see. So let's set it to our screenshot scheme and let's run it. Instead of the blocky, gigantic one on Windows. I haven't used Windows in a while. Which means I haven't played Overwatch in forever. Um, oh, it's running on my iPhone. It looks like it's it's still showing the um let's try to run it on simulator. Looks like this didn't really do anything. Let's look at the documentation for this. Animations are enabled by default. If you disable animations, code inside subsequent animation blocks is still executed. No animations actually occur. animation toggle button. Yeah, that's what this is supposed to be. Looks like it's still animating. Uh, that's the only animation, really. So maybe we need to just wait a little bit for the keyboard to finally show. It doesn't seem to be doing anything. Uh, let's hit a breakpoint, make sure it's being called. It is called. Still getting animations. Not sure what the deal with that is. No, it's I'm trying to turn off um, animations because in my screenshot, it took a screenshot. The scripts took a screenshot right in the middle of an animation. What are you using for CSS? Uh, I'm not using CSS. This is uh, Swift UI. It's not. It's not a website. The native app for iPhone. Oh, maybe you're asking about my website. Uh, my website for CSS. I'm using Tailwind. Uh, uh, Here's my website, and for the CSS, I'm just using uh, Tailwind. I can never use Tailwind. Oh, why not? I uh, I think it's quite nice. <laughs> just didn't work for me. Oh, Astro makes it super easy. Uh, where's my Astro config? Yeah, you just say import Tailwind, integrations Tailwind, and then that was all I needed to do. I've had to use Bootstrap instead. Yeah, I've used Bootstrap a long time ago. Um, I'm glad that there's newer stuff now. <laughs> uh, standing on the shoulders of giants and all that. Like Mary Kondo says, we can say thank you. Thank you, Bootstrap, for your service, but now I'm on to other things. Because it no longer sparks joy for me. The I did like replacing this with uh, with some code.
My website code always looks so blocky, but I love working with CSS. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I wanted to hide, uh, always hide the banner during um, screenshots. Uh, let's see, screenshot tests. Um, let's see, can we add like a weight in here? But, uh, let's put a breakpoint. Let's run this in the simulator. I like how Swift uses Python if statement formats, but also JavaScript to reprints. Oh, uh -huh. yeah, Swift is my favorite one right now. Use it on the server and apps. Where's the sim? So what can we wait for? Um, I just want to wait till like animations finish, really. For existence well it's going to exist it's just it's still going to be um all going to be animating um if google has a good uh oh there's uh, this guy saying else about animations no uh let's see uh xe ui test wait for is hittable, okay? Try it. Um, done button really. Oh, it is compiling. Okay. So did it wait long enough? Um, we put in a print statement. Take a screenshot. Let's run it again and see. Get the print statement. Well, there's just so much going on. I didn't quite see it. Hmm. Guess we just have to like uh, run the script and see if it um, 
I mean, it didn't fail. So let's run this script again that takes our screenshots and see if it fixes the problem. Taking the screenshot in the middle of an animation. Let's see, so this didn't work. I guess what we're trying to do is um, wait for animation to finish. We're taking a screenshot so that I'm going to follow you. So when you're live, I can pop in, but I got to head out for now. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. It was fun having you. Take care. Have a great weekend. That we don't get uh, screenshots mid, um, mid animation. Uh, so I'm going to go to here. I think that's an improvement from what it looked like before. Yeah, before the the full keyboard wasn't showing and now it is, so that's that's an improvement. Yeah, and this one we didn't have the expectation on and the screenshot happened mid animation. So we can um we can apply this approach to uh, both times. And I guess we can make a little helper method. For hittable. Um, where to say this? Wait for element to be hittable. all this this is the element what is this i think this is an xe ui element Oh, I got that right in the worst prep. First try, I was not expecting that. So we can instead say, wait for element to be hittable of the done button. And the same thing for another keyboard. Uh, yeah, here it is. Cool. So if we run the test from Xcode, going doing its thing in the background there. Cool. Looks like it passed. So let's run it with the uh, screenshot script to get the screenshots and see what they look like.
Well, let's take a look at them. Well, both of these look, screenshots look way better than what's currently on the App Store. You know, what's currently on the App Store is uh, first the link to it. Right, that right there. Cool. Um, let's see what's next. Uh, let's see, uh, the comment message is wait for animations to finish or taking a screenshot. Then let's add a new version. So, two. And we can delete all the screenshots because add the new ones. Finder. Oh, fine. On the screen at the same time. This was I have eight. These. See what's a good order. A E. Show the keyboard, show the built ins. Is this two of the same one? Oh, whoa. This is these two. Um, these two need to wait for the animation as well. Okay. Um, Uh, let's see if if that works. So first, let's um, run the test. Oh, uh, this should be change the name of that method. Yeah, we got a failure. Um, Look, I should really change because one of these is an Apple controlled label and one of these is mine. If I change mine, maybe it won't be ambiguous. Um, so that was on the code editor view. Yeah, so I'm calling it close. Uh, call this miss, uh, code export, maybe. Dismiss code preview. Now let's go to the, let's close a bunch of these other tabs. Okay, now let's try running this and seeing if this if this pattern works and if so we'll take the screenshots again
this to 10? I'm a little surprised. I guess we can wait for share, actually. That's what we're that's what we're tapping next. Oh, oh, I had a oh, had a little typo there. Um, let's stop that command dot and let's run it again from the top. Okay, we got through it successfully. Uh, let's run the screenshot script. And let's see what they look like. That looks good. Let's look at the code share ones. There we go. That's what it's supposed to look like. And that's also what it's supposed to look like. Perfect. But we uploaded. Um, that's what's currently, that's one I did manually. This one's I took with the script, and you can see that these two at the end, they are not right. You can see it just coming into view at the bottom there. Same with over there. So let's delete uh, those and let's oh, let's let's get what we have. Um, let's see code preview. Presentation animations. Cool. So let's go back to Finder. Yeah. Getting on the screen at the same time. Those a maybe a keyboard show the built-ins uh, code export well cool. let's do the uh, alt pro max. A, a keyboard built in codex e oh okay so that's the order and then let's uh, upload a new version of the app 
So in our Xcode Gen YAML tabs to 1.0.2. And then swish uh, regenerate the project. And then to the App Store. Oh, we can check these two off. Say we peek at door. Loading. Oh, I have start processes that build. We can say what's new. Um, added a clear. Did a wide uh, play button. At the bottom screen and uploaded new screenshots. Oh, and the unique um, unique labels for each tab. That's the icon, really. The one would say the label is the text part of the unique icon. Cool. Uh, that. So just wait for the build to come through. Uh, what can we do while we're waiting for the build? Um, oh, we can commit that, that version bump. One more time. There we go. There's something different. Done. And save. And add for review. There's still screenshot uploads in progress. What? So the build loaded faster than the screenshots? Those all came through. How was two? Those are the. I wonder if they just like aired out or something. Um, that was the two code export ones. And then this was attack time. We had a keyboard that showed intensity, which was this last one. Yeah, it looks like they're all there. Cool. They're still there. They're right there. 
Well, we pushed the App Store, now we need to wait for screenshot uploads in progress. Oh, I should hide um, iPhone so you can see the list for screenshot uploads, even though they're still there, even though they are right there. It was gray and it turned blue. Is that a good sign? Uh, it's been uploaded and is processing. These two are here. Tomorrow is WWDC. Keynote starts uh, 1 p.m. my time, New York time. I'm going to do some live reactions to it. And then as soon as the beta comes out for Xcode, we'll be playing with that probably all week long. Trying out whatever new stuff Apple announces. Hopefully the beta is somewhat usable. Waiting for this screenshot to come through. We just delete this. <laughs> Boom. So that'll be on the App Store soon. Thanks so much for programming with me, and I'll see you tomorrow for WWDC.